Hey, what's up? I'm Guy. I'm John. It's our YouTube channel. Subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. Podcast below in the description. Check it out. John, I have concocted a trade proposal for you. I like it. So we react. We did a video, and on the podcast, we talked about uh, Greg Bedard's report that Jimmy Garoppolo's plan A for the for the uh, Patriots. And as we were talking through it, we reached the conclusion that maybe it would make sense if you're trading Jimmy Garoppolo to the Patriots to trade him for a player and not for a pick. And then I was reading Albert Breer on Monday morning, and he wrote this about Stephon Gilmore. Gilmore's injury at the end of the year complicates what seems to be fait accompli that they would trade him. New England does not want to extend him. His contract this year is $7.9 million. Whether he'd play at that number elsewhere is a question. His cap hit is $16 million for the Patriots. If they were to trade him, acquiring team is getting $8 million in all pro. Now, there's a few questions here, Middlecoff. One, he's coming off a torn quad. The reports okay. are he might be ready for workouts, but that doesn't sound good. Yeah. Two, he wants an extension. And he's going to be 31 years old in September. Okay. And before the trade deadline, when he was healthy, uh, Diana Rossini reported that the Patriots would be seeking a first-round pick for him. So there's a lot of factors here, health, extension. But I think as we go through it, there's some things that would actually work here. Are you intrigued or do you hate this hypothetical trade? Well, pre-quad injury, he had had a stretch for from 18, 19, and 20 when he was on the Patriots Pro Bowls. 18 and 19, first team all pro. 19, defensive player of the year. This guy wasn't, you know, the best corner in the league. He was arguably the best defensive player. He was elite. Honestly, remember when Belichick signed, it was like, God, Belichick's paying all this money for him. He lived up to the hype. He exceeded it. He was awesome. He was elite for them. To me, a torn quad, if you had said he had torn his meniscus, he had broken a leg, something that we're kind of familiar with in NFL circles, I think we could gauge it better. Like, yeah, you know, this guy's going to bounce back. I, I do think that's a pretty scary injury. Uh, you know, I, I could not give a guy a contract extension without him playing on, on that injury. Yeah. I do think because of the injury, it gives you an opportunity to quote unquote buy low. If he was fully healthy and you were willing to pay trade Jimmy Garoppolo back to the team that gave it to you, I think it was Larry King who got a divorce from a wife. He was married like six times, ended up remarrying a wife. There's definitely a famous person count who as did a, that. Does that count as a separate marriage? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Like, if you trade, like, part of, like, Belichick, you're just sending them back, right? You're just getting it back together. Well, I think we've all been saying, what would the cost be? What would the cost be? I could live with the risk of this because the Niners, in previous years, I'd be like, they need picks. They made all these trades. This year, they got the 12th pick. They got their second-round pick. Pretty sure they got... I guess they lost a third for Trent Williams, but they got it back with Robert Sala. So they have picks in every round. I don't need an unlimited amount of rookies. Like the Niners do, they, there's a fine balance of they're going to depend immediately on young guys that are already on the team, right? The, the first and second round picks are immediately going to be asked to contribute. That's a lot of guys we're already talking. All their corners aren't under contract. I like, I would do this deal. Again, zero contract extension, but just straight up Jimmy. Because if he was healthy, the Patriots, you'd go, well, are you throwing in a third-round pick? Like Jimmy in a third for Stephon Gilmore? But to me, just straight up, the risk. To me, the Niners might push back. Do we want to be in the business of older players? Like part of getting Richard, for example, he was cheap. We got him on incentive-based deal. We didn't have to give up any picks. We just got to do that. And I think you could look at this upcoming crop of players that – Everything that I've read, and it makes sense because the money's come back to earth, is the high-end guys, the healthy high-end guys, right? Like a Yannick Ndokwe or a guy like that is going to get huge money. The middle class or the guys with a lot of question marks are going to have to take like one-year deals because they don't have much leverage because there's not as much money out there. Could you find multiple lower-end guys and invest these resources other places? That That's what I would ask myself. It's crazy to say of defensive player of the year, but the injury, the age – uh I would probably do it, but I don't think it's crazy if the Niners, yeah, we'd rather have your pick. I would do this trade for a couple of reasons. One, it's a short-term trade a little bit because you're trading them a quarterback, which they desperately need for a guy whose contract is over in two things. He could be really expensive one or two, just not as good because of the injury, right? It's yeah. I'd say the Niners incur more risk than the Patriots. 
They would incur some risk. I, I, so I think there's a lot of elements here, but I would do the deal first and foremost. The stuff you said about Richard, I think, does apply to Gilmore. He is cheap. There was a risk with Richard, too. Just like there, was a, there, there wasn't really any risk with Jason Verrett, right? Verrett. Okay, they, yeah. they didn't cost him much. But they have had some success with corners who've been injured. And they I didn't have put, to give up anything to get Richard, though. No, they but they did have to pay him money. And this guy, you said he's cheap. This guy's cheap, too, potentially, if you're not giving him an extension at under $8 million. Like I, the, the only reason we can even bring this up is because he's been hurt and because you might have a player that the Patriots would value more than other players, other teams. If you told me that Jimmy Garoppolo's value was a first-round pick, I wouldn't trade him for Stephon Gilmore. Hurt. But his yes. value is not a first-round pick. And I could see if you're the Patriots, now you made the case to me, maybe they would just run it back with him, not trade him, try and be good this year, acquire Jimmy, use their third. They could do that. But they could also say, no, nah, we're kind of in this middle ground where we want to rebuild, but we also want to win. I'd rather keep my third and give up Gilmore, who we don't want to give an extension to. I, the thing about it is the Niners would not be Gilmore's first choice because the Niners would not want to extend him. And his first choice would be to play somewhere where he could get extended. But maybe he watches Trent Williams get the biggest contract in the free agent market and goes, Trent just went there, played there for a year, and then got paid. Maybe it makes sense for me to come back, not demand my extension now, show everybody I'm healthy, ball out on this Niners team, play 16 games, and then I can get paid when the cap comes back up in 2022. I mean, I... That's what I'm talking about for the non-high-end healthy guys. I think a lot of guys are going to take these one-year prove-it deals, and his contract is already like that because he comes to the Niners. Let's just say this that happens. He has a great year. He is probably a top two or three free agent next year, right? Yeah. Even if it is just two years, you know, $45 million, right? He could get like 40 guaranteed. Yeah. He could get an He could get a huge amount of money even if it's a shorter-term deal for an older player, right? Yeah. The Niners might do that. Like two years, forty million, guarantee thirty, or something, you know, or something like that. They might, because I don't right, think he's at, at, he's, at he's 30. not thirty-five. I mean, he'll be thirty-one. Yeah, I but I can't give three four-year deals. But I could I could front load and make a huge deal to but you not know, a guy he like plays that. Plays for you, not coming off the yeah, injury yeah. now. Now here's the other. But thing. I uh, but I'm also thinking this. You do in football. In basketball, it doesn't matter. You build for the league. You're right. You build for your conference. In baseball, your division, you are thinking about that because you play a division opponent, you know, in a normal season, what, like 18 times a year? In football, playing the extra divisional opponent that second time, you're getting DeAndre Hopkins and DK Metcalf four times a year. I mean, I. The Rams I think are no slouches. We Their receivers it, it, yeah. are good. I mean, Robert Woods, or, yeah, you'd probably put him on Robert Woods and hopefully you could just contain Cooper Cup. But I think just those two guys alone, DK Metcalf and DeAndre, if we're making a list of top 10 wide receivers, DeAndre's what, top three, and DK's in the top 10. I mean, these guys, in DK's, you'd say trending. Yeah. You know, yeah. He ain't going the other way. So, and you're right. I mean, just the 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 explosive passing game now with Stafford, you might even want to put more of a premium. I think corners are overrated. I, I, I would lean defensive line first. But, you know, I, I think this guy is pretty unique that I'd have to consider it. Now, Again, the, the injury, I just you, you'd get a physical obviously before the trade, and I think Belichick would say, "Well, hey, we got to get our hands on Jimmy as well." <laughs> yeah, right. It's not like Jimmy's some healthy player. Yeah, but it's like one of those things where you walk the two people to the middle of the bridge and then you exchange them, like you, you know, like a, a, a what was the movie? There was like a spy movie, Notebook? Uh, with Tom Hanks, where they like they they met at a bridge to exchange like hostages. Like you would have to like your doctors would somehow do the physicals in the middle of the bridge, and then you could tra trade players. Yeah, I do. You think they could get a second for him? Would anybody trade a second for Stephon Gilmore if they knew they didn't have to extend him? Which again, this is part of what's he willing to do? Uh, I, I just think it's very. It'd be a team that's taking on some risk. Yeah, for it's sure, just, it'd be very risky. Because at your second, most people in the NFL will tell you second's arguably the best value in the league because you feel pretty good about hitting on the player. You just look at all these studs the last half decade that have come from the second round. They're immediately cheap, right? Part of like w when the Niners draft Kinlaw, like Kinlaw doesn't make eight hundred thousand dollars, right? He's the thirteenth pick in the draft or whatever. This year, it's the twelfth pick in the draft. Debo, they'd be like, God, if he's just good, or Fred Warner when he was good in the third round, they're the best value on our squad. Yeah, here's. Can I give you another scenario then? And we saw this. My, with my point is that I Belichick, 
that he might not do Gilmore straight up for Jimmy Garoppolo if he could get a second from like the Steelers or whoever. Right. Right. But but get to your point, pick. someone might not give you that. And this is where now you kind of get a replay of the Trent Williams situation where the player doesn't have a no try no trade, but he does have some control. Because I could see if you're Gilmore going, guys, I don't need a five year extension, but I'm not showing up and playing for eight million dollars. So I'm not gonna if someone someone offers a second round pick to Bill, but they tell the agent we're not giving Stefan Gilmore any more money. Stefan can say, I'm not showing up for, for you, so don't trade me for a second, right? Kind of Trent Williams-esque. And all of a sudden, the Patriots end up with a fifth because some team is willing to give Stefan Gilmore, just give him more cash this year, right? He could argue, just somebody rework my contract, give me $15 million. It doesn't need to be crazy, but let's. I need more. I'm not playing for eight million dollars this year, coming off a torn quad. Like for example, Byron Jones, the Cowboys guy who signed with the Dolphins last year, he got all his contract last year because he gets all this big signing bonus up front. But like this year, it's like fourteen million dollars. So he goes, well, it's like I'm better than that guy, right. obviously, right. and that guy is making double me. But again, if you trade him for Jimmy, you could say, well, if we think he's going to be healthy, we'll give him twelve Three million dollars extra. this year instead of eight. Yeah, I I, I could do that. And then you always have the ability to franchise. Because that was one of the things they did with Trent Williams. They didn't have the ability. Like, they waived that. Probably right? have to agree. You'd probably, he'd probably want the same thing. <laughs> and I, the Niners have shown they just feel their culture and be, he'll like it enough. And they ultimately will pay if they like you. Maybe they would be open to doing that. As you said. I, 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 would, I would personally, because I don't think Jimmy would ever sniff, given the injuries, anything higher than probably like a late third. Uh, and probably still, you know, I think a team would ideally like to give a fourth. It'd be hard. You'd be hard pressed to find a better deal if this guy is healthy. It could. It could be like, damn, you got Gilmore for Jimmy. It feels to again. Me like this, too we're good putting of the car before the horse here. The Niners don't have a quarterback. That's the part that when I suggested this trade to you before the video, you said, well, they need to get a quarterback first, and we can finish with that. Yes, there's obviously that that element to all this. But well, Chase Daniels on the trade block, so maybe Bing Bang Boom. Well, I, th- I think is here's the key. As long as the Patriots don't have a quarterback and the Niners haven't done anything, that's still alive. Yeah. Because at any moment, the Niners leading up to free agency or the draft, if something happens, the Patriots to me are the are the mark. And and I mark is like a negative connotation. I think the Patriots the gladly. I don't even think it's, they're not even arguing. They want him back. Yeah. Yeah. They're the fit. Who would that? You think they'd rather have Mariota? They'd rather have Jimmy. Right. Yep. Have fun, Jimmy.